Echo Kids, I'm Zach, and today I'm going to be sharing my instrument with you, and also my favorite instrument. It's the tuba. So the tuba is enormous, as you might see here, and it's all made of metal. It's made of a really special type of metal called brass, and the reason why brass is nice is because it's super, super soft, so it can bend super easily, which is how you can turn it into all these crazy shapes. So, that's also why this is a member of what's called the Brass Family. So the Brass Family has the tuba, it also has the French horn, the trumpet, the trombone, and a whole bunch of other instruments. So, like I said, this is a, it's a brass instrument, and it's really, really big. In fact, this big main tube, which starts here, and gets even bigger until it becomes this big, huge part here that we call the bell, this main tube, is 16 feet long. That's so long, that's like as long as a bus, I think. It's so long I can't even think of how long it is. Crazy. And yeah, and the other thing to keep in mind is that that 16 feet doesn't include all of these tubes, additionally, which are a whole bunch of, here, I'll turn it around for you so you can see. See, look, there are even more tubes all over the place. So that's just, that's just a main tube. There are more than at least 20 feet of tubes when you account for all the different tubes in a tuba. In fact, I would say that a tuba is a pretty fitting name. I must say so myself. So anywho, yeah, it's a pretty fun instrument to play, I think. One of the interesting things about the tuba is that you pretty much always have to play it sitting down. There are a couple of special types of tubas that are made to be played standing up, but most of them are sit-down tubas, like mine. So, the way that it works, you can't really see very well, but basically you open your legs up and you put it right in between your legs. And there are a couple reasons why we do this. First off, it's because then our, um, our mouthpiece, the part we blow into, is in the perfect spot. And the other part, and this is the reason why I think it's super fun, is we get to roll it on and off our leg like this when we put it down. That's a whole bunch of fun, I think. I don't know. I spend a lot of my days just rolling my tuba on and off my leg, and I must say, I have a very good time. So yeah, we're going to start off today by playing a song that I'm sure you already know. It is the Echo Kids Hello Song. So notice how it sounds very, very different on a tuba than it does when it's being sung, or being played on a piano or on a violin, because the tuba is super, super low. So we'll talk about that a bit later, but for now, here's the Echo Kids Hello Song. <laughs> That was sure a lot of fun. So like I said, my name is Zach, and I play the tuba. This here is a tuba. So the tuba is, is kind of a funky instrument. There are a whole bunch of different types of them. You know, it's unlike the violin. You know, the violin, there's one type of violin, it's the violin. With the tuba, there are all kinds of different tubas. There are bass tubas, contrabass tubas, C tubas, F tubas, tenor tubas, it's all they're all under the umbrella of tuba, but today we're going to be talking about the contrabass tuba specifically, which is the one that I play and the one that most people play. So, like I said, this is a, this is a contrabass tuba, and basically the way that it works is you make a buzz in, in, uh, into this little mouthpiece, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. It's kind of like a trombone, or a French horn, or a trumpet. Um, and then, the air goes through these tubes, and then there are these little buttons that you press, and what the buttons do is they go ahead and they just add more tube, basically. More tube to the tuba. Um, and what that does is that makes the pitch lower. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and play the Itsy Bitsy Spider. And I want you to watch for my spider-like fingers and how spidery they're moving around. <laughs> okay, so let's do that. Okay, well 
that was super duper fun, if you ask me. So, what you might have noticed from that is that it might have been a little hard to sing along with the tuba. And the reason why that is, is because the tuba is a really, really low instrument. So, the tuba can play, you know, notes, that, the highest notes that the tuba can play are generally low notes on other instruments. So they'd be low notes on a violin or low notes on a trumpet. But for the tuba, those are the really high notes. And the tuba can play super, super low notes. And the reason why that's really, why that's really cool is because when we play in an orchestra, right, we have all kinds of different instruments. And so when we have different instruments play in different ranges, right, so say we have the violins are really high, they're up at the top, and then the tuba and the double bass are down at the bottom. What that does is that allows you to have those, those, uh, those instruments be playing different things and have it be a, a whole mesh of all kinds of fun different things. So what I'm going to go ahead and do for you is I'm going to play you a song. I'm going to play you Mary Had a Little Lamb. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to play it up high first. And even though it doesn't sound very high, it's pretty high for the tuba. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it really, really low. And I think that playing the tuba really, really low is the most fun part because, you know, that's what the tuba was designed to do, right? So yeah, we're gonna play it really, really high, and we're gonna play it really, really low. And it might even be hard to hear the notes when it's really, really low, because sometimes it is. But because of the way that orchestras work, if you play really, really low notes in an orchestra, you'll be able to hear them a little better because other people are playing similar notes that sort of make it, sort of bring out the, the, the low tuba note. So it might not sound like anything here, but, you know, in, in, a, in a full orchestra, it would, it would make a bit more sense. But anyway, here is Mary Had a Little Lamb, super high and super low. Was a whole bunch of fun if you ask me. Now I have to say one of my favorite things about the tuba is not just playing it high and playing it low but when we mix those up we play a bit of high and we play a bit of low all in one song. So I'm gonna go ahead and play for you here the wheels on the bus and <laughs> well this is gonna be a little interesting because it does have high notes and it does have low notes but they're not really high or really low, and they're kind of mixed in. So this is more the kind of thing that a tuba player would play if you were playing high and low. Here we go. was really fun getting to hear the tuba play high and low in a more um, connected way, let's say. But I want to come back to something I said at the very beginning. I don't know if you remember this, but I believe that I said that all the sound of the tuba is generated through this little piece of metal called a mouthpiece. Now it's kind of interesting, but believe it or not, all that this huge mass of tubing, it's more than 20 feet of, of metal tubes, all that it does is make what's in here a little bit louder. So, in other words, this is really the instrument. And so the way that we make a sound in, in a tuba isn't by singing through it, la 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 la, as funny as that sounds, it's actually even funnier. What we do is we go ahead and we make a buzz with our lips. So I want to see if you can do this at home with me. So I'm going to do it first, and then we can do it together. Okay, here we go. All right. Mm -hmm. 
That's how you make sound on a tuba. Okay, now let's do it together. You and me. Here we go. I think that's a whole lot of fun. So, now all we have to do is we have to do that in this mouthpiece. And that's what makes it sound a little bit more like a tuba. So. So, that's pretty fun, I think. That's the reason why I think tuba is the most fun instrument, actually. So, what we're gonna try to do now is we're gonna try to play a song just using this. And then after that, we're gonna put it in the tuba. So, I'm gonna play, or I'm gonna try <laughs> my best to, to just through buzzing, play Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Now there are a couple of things you can do. I'm gonna give you the option. You can either sing with me, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, or you can buzz with me. I think that's the more fun option, but either way, come on, let's do it. Okay, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Whew. That's pretty hard, but one of the most interesting things is it actually gets easier to the buzzing on the right notes when you put it in the instrument. So all we do is we just take the tuba up like this, we put this right in here, make sure it's nice and firm, and now we're gonna do it again. So this time I'm gonna play it on the whole tuba, not just the mouthpiece, and you guys can either sing along or buzz along. some fun. So what I want to do now is I want to take a little bit of a break from playing songs and I just want to talk about what the tuba is physically. So as we've gone over there's the mouthpiece which is the most important part and that's what makes the sound and then the rest of the tubes in it in the tuba basically make the sound bigger. So as I said we have these valves here which are these buttons and we can press the buttons and what those do, those, those, those add more tube to the main tube. Um, so, the way that that works is there's a little, little metal here. Let's see if you can see this. See, there's a, there's a little metal rod. And what this does is this turns this thing, which basically changes the way that the air is moving through the tubes. There are a couple of different types. Um, th this is what's called a rotary tuba, which means it has buttons like this. But if you see uh, buttons like you see on a trumpet, those are called pistons. So there are also tubas with pistons. So they're, they're sort of different and they do different things. So the other kind of crazy thing about tubas is there are all kinds of different amounts of valves on tubas. Um, so for example, the trumpet always has three valves. And the French horn, for the most part, will always have four valves. But a tuba can have anywhere from three to six valves which is a whole bunch. And it's kind of crazy because I don't know if you know how many fingers you have on, your, on a hand, right? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> if you have a tuba with six valves, how are you supposed to do it? Well, it's actually kind of funny. What they do is they, they put two of the valves over here. So you're playing with two hands. And so it's a whole circus. It's quite fun. In any case, this tuba that I have here has five valves. We have one, two, three, four, and there's a fifth one right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can get, get the tuba nice up and close. You see that? So what that does is that does the fifth valve. So as I was saying, 
you only actually need three valves on a tuba. So then what do all these other buttons do? What's the point of all this if all you need is three? Well, what the additional buttons do, this will, in my case, the fourth one and the fifth one, and in some cases, the sixth one, what they do is they allow you to play really, really low notes. Because like I said, when you add tubing, it can make the notes lower, right? So you need even more tubing to get to the really, really, really low notes. And I think um, I, I'm going to go ahead and guess that in the other videos in this series, um, I know on the, the French horn and trombone and trumpet, um, that they probably already mentioned these if those if those are out already. But the way that it works is, like I said, you make the you make the buzzes with your mouth, and what that does is you can play a whole bunch of different notes just on one uh, on one fingering. So see if I don't put any hand if I don't I don't put any fingers down. Play a whole bunch of notes. Same thing here. So, it's a combination of what we do with our mouth and what we do with the fingers. And like I said, the really, the, these, uh, like the, the, the fifth valve, for example, and the fourth valve are only really used when you're playing super low. So this is the highest, keep in mind, the highest note that you can play using this fifth valve here. That's the highest note. And the lowest note that I can play using the fifth valve, let's have to see if I can get it. It's very low. I don't know if I can do this in one shot. And that's the lowest note, which is all the valves. And you're just, you're just blowing as hard as you can to get that one to, get that one to come out. Um, yeah, so that's what all the valves do. And the other cool thing is that each of these valves has a little slide. And what the slide does is the slide lets you change how much tubing the valve adds. See if I move the slide here, it's gonna be adding a lot. And if I have the slide down here, then it's not gonna be adding as much. Um, yeah, and then the only other thing that we have is there's a, something called a spit valve or a water key, which is down there. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> this is a little bit tricky here. Let's see if I can turn my tube, my tube around a bit. Uh, right here. And what that does is basically when you play, sometimes you get a, you get a bit of a buildup. Of, of nasty spit and stuff. So what that does is that just empties the spit out. So, you know, of course, you gotta go do that in a trash can or on a pad of some type. Um, but yeah, so the tuba can play all kinds of different things. And because we have these valves and they're kind of slow to move, the tuba's most known for playing slow things. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you an example of a slow song you could play on the tuba. So that was an example of playing kind of slow on the tuba. And next, let's try to play a little bit faster. So this is not gonna be super duper fast, because like I said, the tuba isn't really great at playing extremely fast, but this is, this is a little bit of a faster thing that, that you can play on the tuba. So this is gonna be uh, Yankee Doodle Doo, and uh, we're gonna see how fast I can play it. All right, let's, let's see. How, how, fast, how fast can Zach play Yankee Doodle Doo on the tuba? Let's find out. All right, so that was an example of playing fast. That was, ooh, that was, that was pretty fast. That was, uh, that was quite fast, I might even say. Um, so yeah, next up, what I want to do is I want to talk about my favorite thing to do with the tuba, and that's to play really, really loud and really, really spooky. So this is the kind of thing um, that the tuba does a lot in an orchestra, for example. So what the tuba will do most of the time is the tuba player will sit here, just like I'm sitting here, and just wait. Normally, if a song is about 10 minutes long, the tuba player will sit and wait for about eight to nine minutes of the 10 minute song. 
It was a pretty long time to just be sitting there. But the reason why it's so fun is because when we do get to play, we get to play when it's really loud with all the other members of the brass section. So that includes the trombones and the trumpets and the French horns, and sometimes even the percussion joins along. So the percussion is like the drums and those kinds of things. So it's very fun. And it's the reason why I play tuba, actually. I mostly only play tuba in orchestras because I like, I like those parts where we get to play loud. I think that's the most fun part, in fact. So here is a little example of a well-known loud and scary tuba part from something that you might hear in an orchestra. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it. It's a little bit spooky, but I think it'll do great. Um, so it's actually also known because it was used in, um, in the Bugs Bunny cartoons. So you may or may not recognize this. It's a song called The Ride of the Valkyries. So let's take a listen to that now. So like I just said, that's a really fun song to play because it's really loud and it's just really, it's, it's just loud and it's low and you get to play all kinds of fun stuff. So that's an example of one of my favorite things to play. But the other thing that tubas tend to play a lot in orchestras and also just generally is bass lines. And you might be thinking bass lines. Now see, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Wouldn't the bass play the bass lines? Well, the bass does play the bass lines, but oftentimes the tuba gets to join in for the fun because it's, it's in a sort of a similar range. It's, it's similarly low in pitch. So here's an example of one of my favorite songs from when I was a kid. Um, this is a song called La Bamba, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play the bass line because that's what the tuba would normally play. So you might you might be thinking of what the what the song normally goes like in terms of the um, you know what what what's being sung and everything, but this is just what the tuba would play in La Bamba. <laughs> I really like that song because back when I was in the first grade, our teacher would play that song for us every day when it was cleanup time instead of the cleanup song. So a song holds a special place in my heart. So I want to go ahead and thank all of you for staying for the ride, getting to listen to me and my tuba play a bit for you. and. Um, yeah, it's been a great time on my end, and I hope you've had a good time as well. So we're gonna wrap up by playing the Echo Kids goodbye song. Thanks so much for watching, guys. <laughs>